All right, now to South America. Calm has returned to Bolivia's capital after what appears to have been a botched coup attempt. The army chief who led the rebellion has been arrested along with the head of the Navy. The two men are now facing 20 years behind bars. As rebellious troops stormed his palace, President Luis Arce called on Bolivians to defend their democracy. Ramming the doors of the palace open so that heavily armed soldiers could surge through. Inside, President Luis Arce faced down the general at the head of the rebellion, ordering him to stand down. But Juan José Suniga refused. He told reporters that his troops were there with a mission. We want to re-establish democracy. It is enough that a few people have taken it over. Look where they've taken us. Our children have no future. The people have no future. With soldiers stationed just outside the seat of Bolivia's government, from within, Arce appealed to the people to mobilize to fend off the coup attempt. We ask the Bolivian people to react. We need the Bolivian people to organize and mobilize themselves against the coup d'etat and in favor of democracy. He moved quickly as well to replace the heads of the military, with his newly appointed army chief ordering Suniga's soldiers to withdraw. As Bolivians took to the streets to support the government, the apparent coup seemed to collapse as fast as it materialized, with the would-be rebels abandoning the positions they had taken up just a few hours earlier. With the army gone, Arce appeared before the crowds gathered at the palace, thanking them for standing up for Bolivia's democracy. They wanted to surprise us and surprise the Bolivian people. We have reacted and the mobilized people have also allowed us to reverse this coup attempt today. Thank you, Bolivian people. The authorities moved quickly to arrest the coup leader, Suniga, but he told reporters that the uprising was far from a surprise to Arce, accusing him of ordering it. The president told me the situation was bad and this week would be critical. Then it was needed to prepare something to push up his popularity. And I asked him, shall we take the armored vehicles out? And he said, take them out. Suniga was bundled off by police moments later, with Bolivia's justice minister dismissing his allegations as the lies of a man seeking to justify his own actions. Well, joining me now is Eduardo Rodriguez Verde, the former interim president of Bolivia from 2005-2006. He was also the chief justice of the country's Supreme Court. Mr. President, it's good to have you with us. Let me just ask you, how would you describe what happened in your country yesterday for those three hours? Uh, thank you for the interview. Uh, yesterday was... Uh, a uh, very unfortunate and uh, frustrating happening for the Bolivian people. Currently, we are going through the longest democratic period in our Republican history. We just had uh, one happening uh, late in 2019, when again, uh, a military chief asked Evo Morales to step aside from the presidency. We thought that that would never happen again. But uh, again, yesterday we saw this uh, extraordinary show, uh, media covered in slow motion uh, without uh, the, the other happenings in the rest of the country. So do you, it Mr. was President, uh, uh, do, do you think it was a coup? Was it an uh, attempted coup? I would say it was an attempted coup, but uh, the, the whole matter is being taken to justice. Uh, the Congress has requested to make a, a thorough review of what happened. So there are many loose ends in this uh, happening. And uh, it is, again, a very unfortunate happening because mm -hmm. it shows how fragile the government and the, 
some uh, democratic institutions are. Yeah, you say loose ends. The the, the army chief, uh, you know, if, if we're, we're trying to understand the um, chain of events yesterday, um, is it really credible that the army chief would carry out a coup without being sure that he could hold out for more than just a, a few hours? I mean, do you question his intention? Uh, definitely so. In uh, our long history of uh, coup d'etats, uh, they didn't happen the way things uh, went uh, yesterday. Usually, uh, it's a uh, well planned, strategically operated, so uh, things can move forward. But yesterday, it showed mostly a, a, a general who was upset about his being removed from his post, requesting a cabinet change and having a talk with the president at the gate of the government office. So it's it, it was rather strange, to say yeah, the least. Yeah, you're, you're talking about General um, Zuniga, I think that's his, his name. He, he's claiming no, that right. the president instructed him to stage an uprising in order to improve his falling approval ratings. So, you know, stage um, a coup so that your popularity goes up. Well, uh, I hope it, it doesn't go that way. Uh, certainly, Bolivian people is uh, frustrated because uh, again, uh, uh, the military was taken, uh, were taken the streets uh, openly in Bolivia. That's not legal. That's not democratic. Uh, but anyway, uh, time will tell what really happened with General Suniga and President Arce. Hopefully, we should uh, have a transparent due process that will open up things. And uh, again, uh, we need to enhance our institutions so this will not happen again. Ms. President, if you will allow me to say, you seem very calm, um, considering that just 24 hours ago, less than 24 hours ago, the military or the generals tried to um, t take over the country. Uh, it's kind of explain to our viewers where you're getting this sense of, of calmness from um, after so much turmoil in the last 24 hours. Yes, the, actually, uh, thing, things calmed down uh, yesterday, uh, just uh, a few hours after the attempt to take over the, the government's uh, main uh, palace or office. Uh, things went back to normal when uh, most social movements, uh, the unions who called for a general strike decided to call them off and things, uh, people went uh, back to their homes. There were a lot of uh, movement to get uh, to the supermarkets, to get food supplies or mm. to the ATM machines. But suddenly uh, once the General Shuniga was uh, uh, arrested, things went back to normal. I, that's the reason why this uh, attempted coup seems so strange. Uh, it was just uh, a few uh, tanks or armored vehicles that made an attempt to get in, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, suddenly they were gone. So people realized that this needs to be uh, explained at some point. Uh, things are at the court right now, at the courts right now. So uh, I guess it was a failed attempt to do something. And it, it happened on live television. The entire country was watching as we were watching. Some people have even compared it to a um, telenovela. But let me ask you, do you think the military right. in your country, though, do you think that the military has too much power? And are, are you reassured by the fact that some of these generals have been fired? I, I should start by saying uh, that throughout our uh, History next year will be 200 years of uh, independent uh, of an, an independent republic. Uh, we had dozens of coup d'etats, mostly the, by the military. It's it's an institution that, to my understanding, needs to be overhauled. They do have power because they do get a a, a generous cut from the national budget, being this uh, very needy and a country with, with uh, lots of challenges. So, so uh, in my personal view, uh, that long history of uh, military coups that still uh, make attempts to gain power, 
needs to be uh, reviewed by the politicians, by the people. Eventually, this mm-hmm. probably should call for a renewal of uh, of our constitution or or something mm-hmm. of that sort. Okay. Former Bolivian President Eduardo Rodriguez Valencia, Mr. President, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, for more on this apparent coup attempt, we can now talk with political analyst Miguel Buitrago. He joins us from Bremen in northern Germany. Thanks for being with us. Mr. Buitrago, this apparent coup attempt was over almost as fast as it started. Uh, President Asse is now back in charge or still in charge of Bolivia. What happened there with this apparent coup? What was this all about? Well, it's uh, thanks, thanks for having me. Um, it seems to, for, to me, it seems to have to do with the next year's elections. Uh, uh, and two things point uh, me to this uh, uh, preliminary conclusion, and that is uh, uh, basically what uh, General uh, Suniga said uh, a couple of days ago, um, that he wanted to prevent former President Evo Morales from uh, running again for office. Uh, that's the one thing. And the second thing is what he said uh, uh, after his arrest, uh, basically alleging that the, that the uh, current president, Arce, um, um, told them to, to stage this coup. Uh, so those two things point me to think that it might have to do with the next, with next year's general elections and the divide deep divide uh, within the um, the mass uh, uh, party uh, which is governing governing Bolivia has been governing Bolivia since uh, for the last 20 years or so well, let's just suppose for a moment that indeed President Asse uh, directed the general to stage this coup in order to boost his popularity. Um, how, how is that supposed to stop the former president, Morales, from, from running again for uh, election in two years' time? Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the, the, what doesn't make, uh, make sense uh, because uh, if you were going to do something like this, uh, you would, I guess, you would want to wait uh, until closer to the elections, which are going to be held next year. Uh, to me, it was a badly organized coup, and basically, uh, other than speculation, uh, uh, we don't know much why this this uh, thing could have happened. Well, for more now, I'm joined by Carl Meacham. He's the president and CEO of Global Americans. That's a nonpartisan think tank based in Washington, D.C., that focuses on U.S. policy towards the Americas. Mr. Meacham, it's good to have you with us. You're in Bolivia right now, so maybe you can give us some clarity here. I mean, what, what did we see happen yesterday? Was it an attempted coup or was it a charade? So, so I'm in Asuncion, Paraguay. Oh, you're in Paraguay, uh, but okay. It's, it's, it's close to by. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> but it's close by, and I'm attending the uh, 54th General Assembly of the Organization of American States, where this issue has been pretty much dominant here. And the questions are really going to the reason behind the coup attempt. And as you've said, uh, many different interpretations are being given for the coup attempt. Uh, the, the attempt, which was led by General uh, Suniga, was primarily driven by his demands for a change in the ruling cabinet and uh, the release of several imprisoned uh, opposition figures, including former President Janine Anes. Uh, Suniga claimed uh, that his actions were a response to uh, President Arce's alleged orchestration of the coup to bolster uh, his candidacy for the 2025 uh, presidential, presidential election. This is the sort of story uh, that that uh, I would say yeah. most people are working with. Now, people allege different things. Yeah, but, but I just want to be clear on that. So you're saying that people are, are, are saying that what we, we saw happen yesterday in Bolivia was or- orchestrated to increase the popularity numbers for the incumbent president. That's right. Uh, there, there is no uh, significant proof, but there's a lot of hearsay. And uh, these things, uh, 
really depend on perception more than on substance. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of doubt and question with regards to, uh, you know, what is really happening in, in Bolivia. Is there an infrastructure in place that can provide clarity. I, I understand that leaders in the military, they've been fired. The president is still in power. So who can hold the president um, accountable if need be? And who can investigate uh, independently? Right. Well, as you've mentioned, I mean, there is the question that General Suniga was alleging uh, that the coup attempt was actually orchestrated by President Arce as a strategy to build popular support. But this claim suggests that Suniga believed that he was manipulated into initiating the coup to serve as Arce's political agenda. At this point, there's a lot of he said, she said mm -hmm. uh, with regards to this topic. Uh, and as far as a structure is concerned, I think there will be lots of questions in the next couple of days with regards to the veracity of the statements being made. I, I spoke with a former Bolivian president earlier this, this evening, also the former chief justice of the Bolivian Supreme Court. And I, what struck me was how calm and reserved he was considering what we saw yesterday. And I asked him about that and, and he said, well, we have a history of um, coup attempts in our country, you know, it happens on a regular basis. And so the message is this is nothing new. Well, that is true. Uh, the military in Bolivia has played a significant uh, and controversial role in the country's politics. The event marks the second time in the last five years that the Bolivian military has intervened in civilian political matters, previously stepping in during the ousting of former President Evo Morales in 2019. The recent coup uh, attempt underscores the ongoing instability uh, and the military's influence in dictating governance in Bolivia. So the government's assurance of control over the armed forces in an attempt to restore order and confidence. Uh, but this incident has highlighted the fragility of Bolivian democracy yeah. and its institutions. I mean, this has shaken Bolivia to the core. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I hope we can talk in the future again, because I have a feeling the U.S. presidential election is also going to be um, very important for what happens in Bolivia in the future. Mr. Meacham, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you.